24 hour news source. Randy Weaver says his wife was murdered during a standoff with federal agents and he wants justice. I'm Jim Strickland. We'll hear from him next. Temperatures on the rise as virus strikes the state just in time for the holidays. And you'll never believe how many toys the Marines have collected this year for needy kids. I'm Mary Mills. I'll fill you in. For the first time in a while, we have wind chill factors to talk about. I'm Ed Wilson. I'll have your forecast. All the day's news next on New Center 13. Presenting the Smart Clapper. How smart can it be? Clap twice to turn one appliance on or off, three times for another. It knows the difference. Plug two appliances into the Smart Clapper, then plug it into any outlet. Switch to Away for added security. It turns TV or lights on at the first sound it hears. Clap on, clap off, clap on, clap off. The Smart Clapper. The Smart Clapper is available at Pomida, Walgreens, Elko, and Kmart. Makes a great gift. Ever buy a compact disc that you thought was priced too high or didn't turn out to be your type of music? That's why there's the CD Exchange. We buy your CDs, rock, rap, R&B, jazz, classical, soundtracks, country, and sell them for just $5.95 or $7.95 each. We buy and sell thousands of CDs a week. There's always something new at the CD Exchange and always for less. For your kind of music at your kind of price, try the CD Exchange. If it sounds too good to be true, that's us. Hi, I'm Tim Hufford from Ocala Hands, and we're proud to feature the full line of Amana quality appliances. Right now, during Amana's 60th anniversary sale, get tremendous savings on select Amana appliances. Plus, 90 days same as cash with no interest or payments until March 94. Or, special six-month terms are also available. Buy before December 31st and receive ultimate rebates up to $100. O'Callahan's has been your premier Amana dealer for over 20 years, with three convenient locations to serve you. Live from WHO TV 13, where the news comes first 24 hours a day. John Buckman, Kim Kerrigan, Rick Silvestrini with sports, and meteorologist Gary Ample with your weather. This is News Center 13 at 6. <coughs> A sound that certainly isn't music to anyone's ears. A variety of viruses have Iowans in their grips. Everybody's watching this case, and they've got to do what's right. And Randy Weaver speaks out on his first full day back in Iowa. Good evening. The last time Randy Weaver had spent the night under the same roof of his children, their Idaho cabin was under siege by federal agents. Sixteen months later, Weaver is out of federal custody, back in native Iowa, and ready to put a painful year and a half behind him. Weaver arrived in Iowa last night. He was met by his three daughters and other relatives who have been caring for the girls, and he met with the press this afternoon. Randy Weaver spoke this afternoon of the siege at his cabin and what he'll do now. News Center 13's Jim Strickland was there when we Weaver faced reporters. Well, John and Kim, Randy Weaver's new life begins tonight in a rented house in the town of Grand Junction in Greene County. He says he's going to try to lead a quiet life, but Weaver does not want his daughters to forget the violent path that brought them here. Randy Weaver emerged for a press conference after a meeting with his parole officer. Weaver, a white separatist, says the media has done plenty to skew his political and religious beliefs. He wouldn't say what he stands for, but he did say for what he doesn't. I'm not a hate monger. I'm not a murderer. Whatever his beliefs truly are, Weaver says they led him to a showdown with the government 16 months ago. He'd failed to appear for a weapons trial. In two days of bloodshed, he lost his son and his wife, Vicki, a native of Colville. He spoke of her. She could do anything. She could roof your house today and she was just a little woman she'd roof your house today and then she'd knit your socks tomorrow and she loved you know, she was just a loving person and, uh... weaver's eldest daughter sarah will stay here in the metro to finish high school he says his children have already learned tough lessons no one should trust their government they should always keep an eye on it and uh, uh called vigilance. 
Now, despite Randy Weaver's mistrust of the government, he says he's considering using the system to pursue a federal civil lawsuit. He also wants the federal sniper who shot his wife to be tried for murder. Jim, does Weaver plan to stay in Iowa for any length of time? Well, he said today, John, two to three years, that's his parole term. His parole limits his travel to the Southern Iowa Federal Court District, and that goes until December of 1996. He says he can envision moving back to the Idaho mountains, and he believes his minor children would gladly go with him. All right. Thank you very much, Jim. This is the first time Randy Weaver has been with his family for nearly a year and a half. Their separation stems from a gunfight between Weaver and federal marshals at that remote Idaho cabin. In August of 1992, Weaver's wife, son, and a federal marshal were shot in a shootout. Eleven, then it was followed by an 11-day standoff. Weaver eventually surrendered and stood trial, and he was found not guilty of both murder and conspiracy. <laughs> Weaver was released from an Idaho prison last Friday after serving time on two lesser unrelated charges. Authorities are looking for a suspect in a sexual assault on the city's east side. They say it happened at a laundromat over the weekend on East 30th. A woman says a man dropped his pants and grabbed her, but she talked him into letting her go. Her description of the man matches that of a suspect in a separate incident in the same neighborhood. We are working on another case, uh, a burglary that he may be involved in. So it appears as though his behavior uh, has escalated, and we'd like to get him picked up as soon as possible. If you have any information about the suspect, please contact police. The investigation into that apparent murder-suicide over the weekend is all but complete. Authorities say 59-year-old Lee Renwantz of Scranton shot and killed his ex-wife following a divorce. Lorraine Renwantz died Saturday afternoon as she was removing belongings from the couple's home. Lee Renwantz then drove his pickup through the front of the house of Lorraine's attorney. Finally, authorities say Renwantz went to the shed and hung himself his body was found late Saturday afternoon. The couple had been married for 33 years. A joint funeral will be held Wednesday afternoon at Hastings Funeral Home in Jefferson. We first told you last Friday about a drug bust by Polk County Sheriff's deputies which netted seven one-pound bags of marijuana, cash, and some powerful weapons. At that time, 28-year-old Glenda Elschlander was arrested and officials were searching for her accomplice, 24-year-old David Adney. Word now that Adney turned himself into authorities this morning. The two faced numerous charges and officials say more arrests are pending. David Shedlock from Operation Rescue, not in federal court today, but his attorneys were arguing on his behalf. Shedlock is questioning the legality of a parade ordinance in Urbandale. It's that ordinance that prohibits Operation Rescue members from holding demonstrations out of, outside a doctor's home in that community. Shedlock believes the law is a violation of federal uh, freedom of speech. The judge is expected to rule on the issue sometime in January. If you haven't picked up a cough yet, watch out. The experts say we're entering a major flu season. As Phil Scott tells us, this time it's nothing to sneeze at. <coughs> For some students, this is the new home room at Southeast Polk Junior High. Influenza and dozens of viruses like it are sending students to the nurse's office in droves. Ever since last Thursday, we've had a string of students in, and it's almost hard to keep up with the number of students that have come in ill. When I woke up, my, I was dizzy and stuff in my stomach, and my head hurt. Justin Woodard is just one of 103 students either on their way home or already there, the school's highest sick count. I don't think it ever reached this level. I think this is a new level. It's getting so bad. Last Friday, the school nurse sent out a notice to parents saying that a lot of kids are coming down with something like the flu and to leave their sick kids at home. Obviously, some didn't read it. By noon today, 18 more went home sick. The nurse said I had a temperature. The nurse is about to send another one home, but not just school kids are getting hit. State epidemiologist Laverne Wintermeyer says two types of flu bug and dozens of flu-like viruses are making the rounds. The very old and the very young are the ones at risk. And there are a number of deaths 